Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at the William Heaven Hill 12 year old. This one, Dustin, barrel proof. Yeah. Uh, this one comes in at 67.2% ABV or 134.4 proof. Mm -hmm. uh, Dustin, uh, this particular one. Um, so, basically, the same people that make Elijah Craig barrel yep. proof that we love. We love the Elijah Craig I barrel proof. I believe it's the same mash bill. Can't confirm that off the top of my head. Yeah, um, all it tells us in the back is this the seventh edition of William Heaven Hill. Uh, extremely limited, unique offering. Uh, age 12 years on the 10th floor of Rick House 1K. A brickwork house located in the historic, uh, the story. Uh, 35 barrels 35 made. 35 up. barrels that's made. It. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> anyway, um, Dustin was able to pick this up uh, a couple years ago, wasn't it, Dustin? Yeah, this one, I think they're on like 10 or 11 now. So it's been a while. Mm hmm. So this is batch. This is the seventh release. Um, anything special about the maturation or anything you can tell us about this one? Nope. I think you just covered it. Okay. Well, <laughs> that brick house in twelve years. Okay. Nothing else. Nothing else to speak about. So we'll just get to smell and taste on this one. And again, um, big big fans of the Elijah Creek Barrel Proof. If you're a fan of the channel, you know we've done a few of those. All right, Dustin. Beautiful, rich bourbon cup. Oh yeah, on this gorgeous particular one. And you can instantly take a look there, guys. But Look how long it takes. I don't know if you guys are going to see that or not, but look how long it takes for those legs to start going down. It is high ABV. Yeah, dense, oily whiskey. And I mean, you can just mm. all, already tell how dense this is. A lot of alcohol punch with this one. A lot of alcohol punch. And yet here I am getting, I'm getting red fruits, I'm getting beautiful oak, salted, dusty peanut shells are coming out. Peanut shell is actually really obvious on this one. Yeah, some leathers coming through. Mm -hmm. Now the sweet caramel's coming. I'm getting vanilla first. That's what I'm starting mm -hmm. to get. I'm vanilla and almost like a rock candy. Yeah, yeah, now I'm getting a little bit of that vanilla, and it's more like a French vanilla. After you get used to the ABV, it really calms down quite a bit. It takes a second for this one to start unraveling, and unfortunately we're doing a review. This probably should sit in the glass for 10 to 30 minutes, honestly, to really let this open up. Yeah, but it comes off, you know, after an initial, you know, few seconds of nosing, it comes off so much more refined and uh, candied than the normal Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Well, you know what i, I, I got to say to Mike? I know we're talking about how big and dense it is, but it's not punching my nose at all with alcohol. It did at first, but again, that went away very quickly. I, I mean, even at first, I mean, I knew I was nosing a high, high, high ABV whiskey, but it didn't punch for me. It really never has punched me. It was a bit stinging initially for me, but, you know, teach her. Yeah. I mean, now, again, I'm talking 65% plus whiskey Oh, yeah, here. sure. Like, no, it, it's I mean, don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I, you can't tell there's alcohol in here, I guess. I, I should clarify. There's alcohol. But, I mean, when I go into 65% whiskey, I mean, usually it's like, oh, that kind of <laughs> nose hair burnt. Yeah, when you're... North of 130, as far <laughs> yeah, as yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, uh, it gets a little dicey. Yeah, now, I mean, it's really opening up. I mean, it really, it's really candied. It really is. I mean, there's a lot of sweetness here. And what, what oak is there, and there's a, there's a decent oak component to this. It's just nice charred oak. It's not like yeah. really doing anything other than just complimenting sort of an ashy way. And you know, Heaven Hill has always thought 12 years is the perfect bourbon and the difference in 12 years and the pricing and what line it goes into is based on just how well those barrels did what brick house what location because like i mean it used to be for 20 bucks you could pick up an elijah craig 12 year old you know 45 percent abv but that was an inexpensive essentially entry-level sipper 12 year old whiskey back in the day unfortunately they're not that anymore uh, and then you know they brought up the elijah craig barrel proof which has become as you guys know the the barrel proof darling and the value bourbon for us Americans mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. can get a hold of it, maybe sometimes if you're in the right location. <clears throat> yep. And yep, a whiskey that our Canadian friends look at us and go, Do you know how freaking expensive that bottle is for us? <clears throat> I get it. Yeah. It's, it's undervalued here. Yeah. Um, this is the absolute top of the line from Heaven Hill, in their <clears throat> master distiller's opinion. Well,. I'll say this, it's enough different to make it worth it going for a bottle like this, especially if you like the bear proof. There'll be some things there that you'll recognize, but this is a much, much different whiskey. This is a very much a more sophisticated, more cleaned up version. Yeah, 
it's starting to kind of bring me back to some of those old Elijah Craig uh, pirate bottles to a, to a degree. There's kind of a dusty note that I think comes with that peanut shell. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting to get that a little bit. That dustiness, slightly toasted marshmallow vanilla kind of notes. Mm-hmm. It's like vanilla caramel marshmallows kind of toasted. Yeah, there's even a little bit of that, like, again, a little wood smoke, uh, you know, just like, you know, not heavy, very light. It very much camping out. I tell you what. Not even graham crackers on here, man. It may come off more sophisticated in a higher class version of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof on the nose, but on the palate, it's that same down and dirty bang chocolate, a little bit of spice, heavy alcohol, just bite to it. Very similar. That's recognizable, I'll tell you that. This is like one of the really good C batches. Yeah. Dark chocolate. Yeah. Bit or maybe an epic B batch. It's definitely not an A batch. And there aren't a lot of epic Bs. Sometimes <clears throat> the Bs are a little this one would be an epic B. Mm. Yeah, dark, rich, bitter chocolate. Mm. But it's got this like rich Biting oak. super complex I mean I'm, I'm back to the stupid, you know, it's it's bourbon, it's vanilla and caramel, but it's this like rich, dusty peanutty, like caramel, brittle kind of thing that's going on there that's mm-hmm. been sitting in a rich leather with... Got some char to it, though. And some fall leaves. And, some, and chocolate. Definitely some chocolate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's cocoa. Mm-hmm. Getting a little taste here before I had water. Man. Now that tastes like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Like a really good version. Mm. There's different chocolates in here. Mm-hmm. There's, it's, it's like... Oh, you know what it is? It's um, hot chocolate powder mm-hmm. and rich, dark, dark chocolate. This actually is weird. Um, oh, yeah. The other day, my girl brought home two different kinds of chocolate, like a Dove. It's like okay. a regular milk chocolate and like a Ferrero Rocher, like round. Like mm-hmm. you, you have to like uh, like twist the handles on them like a, like a pop with caramel inside. Mm. And it's like that. It's both of them at the same time. Oh, wow. my God. And to finish, my, like, I can't even go back in with water. Not yet. No, I mean, Stalling. it's... Stalling. I mean, I've been stalling. I mean, it's just because the first pour I did, like when I tasted it, I mm-hmm. under tasted. Mm-hmm. I got a little too little, which allowed me to kind of pick up. Sometimes when I don't drink enough with big bold whiskeys, mm-hmm. I kind of I pick up more of like the tannins, the oaks, and I kind of went, Ooh, "There's a few things here that are making me think for a second about this whiskey." Mm-hmm. Then I came back in, just added a little bit more so I could really get the full, the full experience to so like fully cover my mouth, fully coat everything. God, I mean, just... It's a good one. I'm still getting this candy chocolate. and I, I mean, admittedly, there have been a few Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs that hit on these notes, but I do think there's a little bit more of refinement here. The fact that you just said candied chocolate. <laughs> it's a chocolate anyway, but I know exactly what No, no, <laughs> it is candied chocolate, yeah. and I mean it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good one. Mm. And now going back in the nose, because I put a decent amount of water in it, man. I'm still tasting it, man. That, that chocolate and cream and like crystallized sugar. Oh, the, the mouth, the, the now here, three, four minutes later mm-hmm. after drinking it, I'm literally tasting that right now. It's a, <laughs> it's an impressive long finish. Like, it, I'm getting that like that chocolate and then I'm getting that, again, that like heavy whipped cream. It's nice to wear mm-hmm. all three of the experiences, nose palate finish or, or enough different where mm-hmm. it's a, where it's a, where it's worth paying attention to and you don't want to fall asleep on any part of it. You know, you don't want to just go through the motions or, you know, sidestep anything. Because you're right, that's a completely different experience. It still smells super candied on the nose. Mm -hmm. And I know as soon as I drink this, even with a few sips of, or a few uh, drops of water, it's going to be aggressive. Yeah, it's way more fruity and caramelly. There might even be like a little bit of a caramel apple on the nose. But like, and fall leaves. Oh, maybe a little apple, maybe it's apple cider and caramel. Because there's a spice here too. A little bit of rice spice coming through now. It gets spicier with the water, but man, still a, a wallop of chocolate on the palate. And it kind of like builds in the back for just a minute. It's almost like, you know, like backfiring or something. And as soon as you swallow, like you think it's going to go down, and almost the, the smoke from the oak fights its way back up. Bam. Fun whiskey. I'm definitely picking up those rye notes a little bit more now on the nose and the palate with water. You're right. There's a mintiness to this. Not sure I'm getting. I mean, yeah, I kind of get am, mint, but I'm. I am. Sometimes I, rice spice just makes me think mint because I got the rice spice. And so I think, oh, there's got to be mint here. Mm-hmm. This one, I'm not getting mint. Well, I am. I'm getting the, 
I don't know. I, I think I'm just getting a little bit of Mentos. I, I just think I'm getting uh, rye like rye bread notes, and I just start associating rye bread with mint because I'm drinking whiskey. But yeah, the caramel's now more prevalent. The chocolate's a little subdued. Fun whiskey, Dustin. One thing I've noticed with you know, I added a decent bit of water. Probably could have added a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It didn't bring up any tannic notes. Didn't bring up any uh, offsetting wood notes. Sometimes yeah. you know you barrel, it, you it go did. barrel proof because. Mm -hmm. You're kind of wanting to hide those off notes that water will bring out. It didn't make anything bitter or anything or, or push anything in a bad direction. Not at all. Let's go crazy here. Just real quick. That's going to decide where I go on my final score here. One of my better bourbons. It's not King Kentucky. Yeah. Well, you know, we actually, remember we did this bottle, WLW, and mm -hmm. in King of Kentucky once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe. It was you, me, and uh, another friend of ours. Adam. Adam, yeah. And Just came in third. And I want to say two of us picked this second. One of us picked this, picked it third. You may have been the one who went that direction. I'm pretty sure I picked this second. Well, regardless, probably a good time to get a whiskey score. I'll give you a few minutes to collect your thoughts. I've been thinking about it for a while. Okay. I originally came in thinking 88. I outperformed that. I'm going to give it an 89. It is, is an overall whiskey score. It is one of the better bourbons. It might be on the fringe of one of my top 10 bourbons or 15 bourbons I've ever had. Yeah, I mean, I've had a the 2017 George T. Stag would top this. Agreed. No, no other stag I've had post-17 would come even, would top this one. I haven't had all of them, but they wouldn't top it. I mean, again, I like Elijah Greg Barrel Proof. As you know, I collect them. I am hip to this yeah. profile. Now, 89 for a bourbon for me is a high score. 250, Mike. Worth it. I, I agree. And, uh, and as such, I am going to give this the lowest 90 I can give it. I'm going to give it a 90. I give it a strong 89. Yeah. And the reason being is I think it's worth it 250. I think if they went 275 on this one, I probably would still be okay. I think 300 is where I'm starting to get pretty questionable. I'd do it a three. And I think I still would in that. Mm -hmm. Again, if I, I want to spend 300 bucks. I think a ninety's right. Yeah, um, I spent three hundred on this. I don't know if I'd spend four hundred on it. No, but I would spend three hundred on it. Yeah, and I, I've kind of come to where I think once you get to three, if it's, I, I will definitely buy it three hundred. Mm -hmm. It should be a low ninety. If it's an obvious four hundred buy, that's when I start thinking, well, maybe we got to go a point higher. Fun whiskey from a distillery or a distillery that produces a whiskey that I love. Yeah, and that this is a similar setup. Yeah, I don't know the same mash bill or not, the same years. The palette's very similar. Yep, but a little bit better. Like you said, it's a, one of the better C versions of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah. I, again, I think they just I, they, they knew the, these casks added an element of refinement that some of the casks in those Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And that's exactly yeah. what it is. It's, it's, it's exactly a, what it is. Exactly what it is. A little more refined, a little better. A yeah. little better. It's a little better. 5% better. Now, is, it, is it worth the giant price hike? Well, here's the thing. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is criminally underpriced. Criminally. And yes, that's a win for us bourbon geeks. But the reality is... Well, this is a limited affair. Yeah, they do one one batch of this stuff a year. Mm -hmm. Changes every year. Yeah. We've got. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we've done any of these before. I don't know. We may have done the thirteen. I've got a sixteen year old somewhere that we could probably do. Good whiskey. This is great. Yeah. Mm. This. I mean, again, it, 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 when you spend money on whiskey, hundreds of dollars, two hundred, three hundred, whatever, you want to be impressed with the whiskey. This is at least impressive whiskey. If you're not impressed by this, you're not gonna. You have either you hate bourbon or you hate whiskey. Or high ABV. I mean, let's, let's say this is commitment as far yeah. as power. You can bring this down and it takes the water beautifully. For sure. Absolutely. Anyway, those are our thoughts on it. Um, very, very good bourbon. Dustin's at a 90. I'm at 89. We're, we're kicking around essentially the exact same standard and quality. But uh, very good bourbon. Uh, one that we've been both excited with for quite some time. Anyway, um, those are our thoughts on the whiskey. If you guys had a chance to try the 7th edition, we'd like to know what you guys think. And Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.